He said good. <laughs> All right, y'all. So we live. What's good, everybody? Give us 2.5 to get everything shared. And then we're going to get started. What's good, everybody? Give us 2.5 to get everything shared. And then we... Who, who did? It wasn't me this time. Give us 2.5 to get everything shared. And then we... <laughs> Not me this time. Oh, I can share it, can you? Oh Lord. Well, I do, but I'm it's just, just super yeah, it's not. Christian. Oh, okay. Fat Boy Friday. All right, y'all let me know when y'all got everything shared. We're we going to get it popping. How do you even share it? We're good over here. From uh, uh, YouTube. I mean, from YouTube. Ooh, from mm -hmm. Facebook. So you'll go to Facebook, and it should be on your timeline if you follow and see yourself. It'll um pop up on there, and then you'll just share it. Matter of fact, hold on, I got you. Tag it. You like Terry. <laughs> I just tagged you in the comments of it, so it should pop up on the thing. Really, y'all mean? My bad. I'm ready. <laughs> you good? You good? Are y'all ready? Yep. All right, let's get into it. What's good, everybody? It is your two favorite brides of Christ and family, as you can see. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you about to act up. And as y'all can see, we are on the live. Okay. The godly gangster gang. Godly gangster gang. Christian gangster. Christian gangster. Street ministry. Street ministry, y'all. What's happening? What's up? As as Jay said, we got our uh, family here. Um, well, how about we go through introducing everybody? Introduction. All right, baby, you want to go first since you over here? Y'all know who I am. Say <laughs> <laughs> your name. Glad to, be, glad to be back on here, Naji. <laughs> All right, who next? Hey, I'm Casey. I'm Destiny. Manny TV. I'm Josh. <laughs> all right, all right. Y'all better come up with the round table. Okay. <laughs> hey, y'all already know us. Of course, you know me. I'm Jay. And... Oh, my bad. Oh, my name's Caleb. What? Go ahead and disconnect uh, the Wi-Fi, man. Go and turn the Wi-Fi <laughs> off. Oh, hold tight. Hold... Go ahead and do it. Why you ain't been out. telling me this? Need your glasses on your knee. Don't oh, disconnect the power. All right. You got to disconnect it? All right, we should be good now. All right, all right. So that being said, what's good, y'all? We hope that y'all have had an amazing day today. Um, I know we did. Um, definitely got the word today. Definitely got some truth. And that's what you need on a day-to-day -day basis, period. But um, yeah. I could say for me, speaking for me, today was definitely a dope day. Hopefully y'all had a dope day as well. Um, that being said, Kayla, tell the people what we're talking about today. All right, so today we are going to be talking about a topic that um, a couple of us have, have already pretty much talked about. Um, we was at uh, lunch after church one day, and we was just talking about it. And then um, I think it was you, Destiny, or one of, one of you guys was like, maybe we should do this on the podcast, so this would be a good podcast, maybe. Um, and so I was like, absolutely, but I wanted to do it with our uh, some more young adults, and I also wanted to get some more um young men on here um because it's i think it's very important to get two different sides especially more perspectives on what it means uh to be accountable and to be honest so accountability and honesty um mm -hmm. and to see how we can possibly get better what we think 
could change, all of that good stuff um, while we're discussing this on here. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So that being said, go ahead and put on your seatbelt. You want to go ahead and stay locked in for this one. But this is a real talk. Now, if you ain't good with truth, you might want to go ahead and get off here. Let's just go mm. ahead and straighten that out now because we speak in truth. We speak in facts tonight. Point blank, period. Um, that being said, Kaylee, you want to go ahead and start it off with the first question? Absolutely. And before we even start, though, I would like to um, ask for all of you guys to be honest um, be very open, be transparent, because that's that's who we are and that's what we are on here. Um, so if you guys, you know, feel uncomfortable about the question, um, let us know. So maybe yeah. we can reword it. Maybe we can talk, you know, go in a different direction. But other than that, please be honest and open with that. Um, also, I wanted to start with prayer. Um, anybody on here would like to pray to start us in? It's you bowing your head. So anybody. Naji, would you like would you like to put this in? <laughs> All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for life, love, and strength. God, we thank you for another opportunity to be used by you. We don't count it robbery uh, that you chose us to be on here to spread your word. God, we ask that you would just uh, use us like never before, uh, that this video go around the world and touch people's hearts, uh, to see young people are still real. Uh, we're on fire for you, God, and we're nothing without you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So the first question, it ain't deep or anything like that. Um, <laughs> but the first question is, what does accountability look like to you? So um, just so we have an order and we have everybody have a turn. Um, Josh, can we start with you? And then can we go with you, um, Casey and Destiny, then it, then Manny, and then Najee, and then me and Jay go last. Okay, so repeat the question. You said, what does it look like to me? Yeah, what does accountability look like to you? I mean, basically, it's just being able to catch yourself or, like, you know, if I if I see my if I catch somebody over there and they you know cutting up, if I catch one of you know a church member or whoever, and it's just like yo, but you know you you know you tripping, but you know you got to shake right, and of course not to just like like beat up on them about it because I know you know I was in that same spot and somebody had to say it to me mm -hmm. when so so just being able to. Being there for your uh, sisters in Christ and keeping them on the right path. Yep. All right, Josh, can you go ahead and go on mute, and then we'll have Casey and Bessie next. Um, I feel like accountability to me. I'm gonna say like accountability to me is telling me what I don't want to hear. Um, it's telling me when I'm tripping. And I'm coming to you with a situation because I trust you. I trust your life. Mm -hmm. Number one, I think you've got to find the right people to be accountable to, number one. But number two, I trust your life and I trust your judgment. So I'm coming to you with, with this because I know, not that I'm 10, I know I'm tripping, but I don't want to accept I'm tripping because I want to make myself feel right. But I need you to tell me what I don't want to hear. I need you to make me look at myself in the situation, even if I'm justified, even if I have all the evidence in the world that I'm right. Um, I need you to give me that perspective on, okay, I hear you, but let's look at you. What can you do? How can you be better in the situation? Not give me more ammunition to say that I'm right mm -hmm. or not give me more ammunition to say, um, yeah, make this a decision on your flesh because you're right. No, no, no. I need you to tell me when I'm tripping, as, as Brother Josh said, when I'm wrong and let me know the truth. Don't make me feel good. I don't need to feel good. Uh, just being able to look me in my eyes and tell me the truth in love. Yes, to piggyback off of that, um, accountability to me is just truth um, that you are held to from someone that you do trust, um, someone that you do know is living the life and um, um, growing with you. Um, it's the path to maturity to me. So you hold to me accountable is you helping me grow, you um, reminding me of what 
I said, <laughs> right? What I said, um, oh, wait, you hold me accountable. Now remember, because you, and then you do it. Now I got an attitude. So accountability to me is, first of all, you got to be real with yourself to even have someone hold you accountable and not even have someone hold you accountable, but can you hold yourself accountable? Like I need to be able to hold myself accountable before anybody else. Cause I'm not going to be around y'all all the time. So what I'm going to do when I'm by myself and I start having them feelings and I'm re- what I'm going to do, I got to hold myself accountable because I made a promise ultimately to the Lord. So that's what, you know, matters, you know? So, uh, mm. All right, uh, can we go ahead and get Manny? Yes, ma'am. All right, so accountability, in my opinion, is being able to have someone or even just yourself, you have to be able to be comfortable with being uncomfortable due to the fact that if you're comfortable with being in the wrong, then you're not going to be able to help be held accountable because you can't be comfortable with doing the wrong thing all the time because of the fact that God always watching. So even when you might get past man with it, okay, it might be cool, but now you got to live with that mentally. So in my opinion, I feel like you got to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Hey, you own it, man. All right, man. Go ahead. Uh, accountability uh, to me, uh, again, everybody has basically said what it is. Um, it's also, I would think like loving yourself, not always depending on people. Um, I think sometimes we, as people in the body of Christ, we think that just because we got friends at church or friends, colleagues or whatever, that we always got to carry our burdens to them. We also need to look at ourselves and, you know, what we need to do in life to just stay on the right path and not put, I, I say, a dropping zone. Stop putting your mess on other people. At the end of the day, it's you that's got to stand before God. A lot of people think because they're accountable to a friend or they're accountable to a boyfriend, which is not even a real thing. We know that all these people that's on here, if you're looking at this, we learned today, boyfriend, girlfriend, cheating on people, it ain't it ain't even real. If you ain't married, you ain't never you ain't never been a cheater. If you come to 5180, you'll figure more out about this. But I, I'm sorry, I just ain't putting it out there. But what I think is that we need to take accountability of ourselves and take responsibility. Our pastor tells us all the time, when we do things, it's it's you, it's nobody else. So accountability is also responsibility. You out here doing wrong things and you out here living your best life, be accountable, hope, be the best demon you can be. If you're a Christian and you're living for Christ, be accountable to yourself, the Lord Jesus Christ, and have a select few people that you can depend on and hope be in your corner. You don't need a whole lot of people. Man, I, I have to say, I agree with all of y'all. I really don't have nothing else to add. I mean, y'all say be accountable um to the lord be accountable to yourself and also like like Bate just said a, a select few um i definitely agree um i really don't have anything to add y'all y'all answering amazingly so i'm just gonna leave that that jay go ahead and uh you can also ask the next question Child, i ain't got nothing to add either because i i definitely agree with all of y'all man y'all hit some hi i hit some some good points right now i'm just saying man uh but it's definitely real though. Um, and even considering account- accountability and concerning the fact that it's a responsibility piece, like bro just said, like that that responsibility to yourself, if you don't know how to already hold, take responsibility for anything in your life, you won't have a problem with accountability because a part of accountability is responsibility. So man, hey, that, that was big in my book. So with that being said, for everybody, right, going to the next question, has there been a time in your life when people were in your life to keep you accountable? Like, have you really had true accountability partners in your life? And uh, Same thing, same order, going in the round. Uh, 
Yes. Yes. Uh, like, but I will say it, it was never as like consistent until I started being accountable with myself. If I see myself starting to like, and I'd be like, bro, get right, bro. And then it's like, once you see yourself trying to get right and like, not even on a, not even trying to show everybody that you're trying to get right, but just, you know, just doing it and people going to just naturally see it. And they'll be like, all right, I see you, bro. You know, just keep, stay, stay where you keep going, keep going. Like, you know, it's going to get hard, you know, it's gonna, and like, just speaking for me, like growing up, uh, it was always just me or it was just me and my cousin. And we never really like, we just thugged it out together. We never was to hold each other accountable unless it was something pertaining to something crazy. But, but I can honestly say like, now that I'm like older and realizing and actually trying to trying to stay right that you out of anybody you got to do it to you, you got to do it to yourself first you got to hold yourself accountable and of course we got the man of god holding us accountable and just just yeah i i ain't i can say i've never been as consistent as i have been until like now like taking it serious real steps Mm -hmm. um absolutely um i think i found more people for me i found it in older people um i don't know how many people around my age i can say i have told me accountable because a lot of people especially in the church learn if you grew up in church you know you a lot of people do not have faith right and so that's the the problem there so for me i do but a lot of them are a lot older than me and when i say a lot i mean i think 10 plus years a uh, majority of people have on me um because when you're serious and you're mature i don't have time for childish games so if you're a child and you still acting like a child but well, then that's who you are right if you ain't gonna hold yourself accountable especially the mature in christ then that's gonna be who you are mm -hmm. um but when you want to grow you will surround yourself with people that number one a are where you're trying to go um b their life is an example of change and consistent change not three months and then fall off two months fall, no no consistent change and three, they're able to be vulnerable with you. So um, I definitely say now, um, it's definitely like Mr. Naji said, it's a select few. I don't need a bunch of people. I just need two or three real people. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say I have the older I've gotten, I can say um, I definitely have those, that village around me that's gonna be like, hey, it's you, bro. And again, like we all say, gotta be myself, but for the question, absolutely. Yes, um, the same for me. I do have a select few um, that I can trust to hold me accountable, but in the right way. Um, you know, if you're not careful of who you're talking to, um, you know, people can slide stuff and make you do certain things or, you know, try to act stuff on. But no, I have uh, a select few individuals who do hold me accountable um, the right way. But as I mature, it's more important for me. Like Josh said, like when you really start to grow in this thing and mature, it's just like, no, that's not right. I don't want to be like that. That's not who I am anymore. I don't want to go back to that. So that holding yourself accountable. Um, because if you won't, if you ain't going to take it serious, why do you expect somebody else um, to take it serious? Everybody got their own stuff they trying to deal with. So it's up to us to uh, care enough about our personal relationship with Christ and to mature um, so that we can be better. Hey, Manny. Yes, I also do have a select few, but most of the time I definitely try to hold myself accountability, accountable to myself due to the fact that I'm alone, not a lot of the time, but when I'm working with my business or whatnot, it's easy to get it scratched. There's just a lot of different things out here to get into, not necessarily the right thing, positive, not godly at the same time. So I gotta be able to hold myself accountable before I can let somebody else do it. Because if I don't hold myself, I can't expect to listen to somebody else if I don't listen to myself. So 
but I definitely have a select few, not many. Um, yes, I have a, a few people I can depend on to be accountable to. First of all, it's this uh, Lord Jesus Christ himself. And then this woman right here, uh, certainly uh, in a partnership with a, a wife, uh, you certainly uh, have to lean and depend and be accountable to each other. Um, every day is not a good day. Uh, we have plans and goals and future goals that uh, we discuss and talk about. Um, but again, it's still that it goes back to after you've spoken to your accountability partner, it's still you working on you. Because at the end of the day, we all got to go before God ourselves. It easy, whether you're married, not married, or whatever, you still have to go before God yourself. There's things that you can work on with people, this, that, and the third. But again, your personal relationship because that's what you have to have, a personal relationship with them in order to be with them. Uh, so without that, you're still a ticking time bomb. You have to have your own personal relationship in regards to being accountable to yourself and not only yourself, but Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, I would have to agree. I do have um, a few accountability partners. Um, and I, I think, though, even though I know you guys said you have to be careful, I think a lot of my issue was I didn't want to open up to people. So that's why I don't have as many as I probably should. Um, like, literally, when a few years back, it was me and Jay and the Lord. That That's all. That's it. That's, th that's three, right? Right there. And then adding on Najee, you know, when we got together, that when you are really truly with a partner and you get married, that is going to be your ultimate accountability partner because they see you every day, every night. They see what you're doing, what you're not doing. Like it is, it's real, but it's needed. Um, but yeah, I, I would say a select, very, very few, but it's due to myself um, not opening up as I should to other people who I feel like can keep me accountable. Um, so yeah, that's what I'll say. Man, y'all y'all definitely made a, a lot of great points. Um, uh, but to answer the question that was asked, um, yes, I, I've definitely had um, accountability partners on both sides of the fence, whether it was in the world or whether it's been in um, in in Christ at this point. Um, but one thing I, I will definitely say is that, um, like like Michaela mentioned, I had a problem with trusting people. Like, yeah, like I can I can be nice to you all day long. I could shoot the breeze with you, laugh with you all day long. But it's, it was layers to that even then to, for me to even open up to you and tell you what was really going on. So um, as everybody has mentioned, my, my accountability partners are very select, but they're also um, very intentional because I can't have a yes man in my corner. I need somebody that's going to shoot it straight with me. I need somebody who's going to be like, nah, Jay, you tripping. Nah, you're thinking too much into it or hey, you might be on something, but you might need to pray a little bit more about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, spirit, not just, hey, yeah, I see, but lead me, keep leading me to Christ too. And when I say leading me to Christ, I already know to go to Christ prior, because again, that's me holding myself accountable. But even then still saying, okay, hey, yeah, we can still talk, but still go back to the man and still make sure that this is what, you know what I'm saying? So for me, as far as my accountability partners go, y'all already know one of them is Kayla. And the other ones, y'all already know, hey, shout out to you, you know what I'm saying? But when it comes down to it, it's very, for me, it's very intentional who I allow my accountability partners to be. Because again, I can't have a yes man in my corner. Because again, if you really know me, you know, you know my past or you know what I used to have going on and you know what I'm working toward. If you know what it is that I'm working toward, but you're not pushing me toward it. Uh, first of all, I need to push myself and I'm already pushing myself, right? But if you're not further pushing me toward it, or you're pulling me away from it. If you're pulling me away from it already, it's a dub. But if you're not pushing me toward it, that's still even a problem there because you're okay with me being comfortable. Like Manny mentioned, you have to be willing to be uncomfortable even in accountability. So that's what I'll say. So can we can go All right. So that was that was real surface stuff, right? So we're gonna get to some deeper questions. All right. Um, the third question is, is there a, a lack of accountability among the church and young adults as a whole?
Okay, so I get just from what I've seen, yes. But as it's changed, as as we're growing, it is changing and it is getting better. And I, I can just speak for what I've seen. And to, you know, consider, to think about it as a whole, uh, I, but I can just say a little, a little bit, we, we, the young adults, this, I can say in some areas it's growing and in other places it's getting worse. And that, that's, 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 that's what I got. It's, it's, it's growing in some places, but in other places it's getting worse. And just, just off of what I've seen. I don't want to, and I, I ain't want to try to say, you know, he shakes, he says she's, but just from what I've seen, what I've experienced in church, being able to grow up and act fake in church, but then being able to hold yourself accountable, it, just the simple thing of being like, all right, bro, chill out, calm down, shake right. You got to, you got to hold yourself accountable. Like, and um, like Kayla and Jay were saying, you got to find the right people to uh, hold you accountable and for you to hold them accountable. Uh, Cause like growing up, I wasn't able to trust nobody else because I couldn't trust myself. I couldn't, I was, just, I was living my life just on shuffle and just going with it. Just whatever happened, happened. Instead of trying to make a stand for myself and standing in the Lord and just, but keeping it real. I mean, you just, that's, that's my, that's the big thing to me is keep it real. So if you see yourself starting to mess up, just, it, it ain't that big. Let it go and get that right. That's all I like that right now. Jesus. My God. Yeah. We'll buy. <laughs> now let me stop. Um, to answer the question, most definitely, and I'll tell you why, to me, number one, either the young, a lot of young adults grew up in church, so they know church, but they don't know relationship, mm. and them are not the same thing, church, church and relationship are not one and the same, that's not how they were, mm. so a lot of us were taught, was taught church, we were taught how to sing, we were taught how to, when to dance, when the core play, mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> We know that, right? We know when prophesying come what to do. If somebody lay hands, we were taught the catechisms of church, but not a lot of us was taught that John 14 and 6. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Hmm. Um, none of not a lot of us were taught that Jesus didn't play no games. Like a lot of us weren't taught that sex before marriage is wrong and not. <laughs> Just because, well, you don't need to have it, but why? Right, right. Don't just tell me I don't need to do it, but why? Yeah. What is the significance? Nobody talked about soul ties until what, 2010? Mm. Then nobody talked about spirits jumping to you when you do that. No. And nobody talks about it like Apostle Johnson, right? Today, when Ms. Naji, uh, boyfriend and girlfriend, a lot of young adults, especially growing up in the church, they want church and they want world. Mm. They're not ready to make a decision. And so the reason why a lot of young adults won't stay accountable is because they're still, they, they're, they're playing this Russian roulette game. And they think because I go to church, that's enough, but they're not living church. And so when you have a young adult that's trying and young adults that aren't, that's why there's always going to be a struggle because you don't want to give up life. You don't want to give up drinking. I don't want to give up smoking. I don't want to give up lying. I don't want to give up suicidal thoughts. I don't want to give up depression because I like it. And there's not enough true young adults in the church to admit, I like what I did or I like what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And instead, we'll come to church and play church, play keys, preach, and still go and lie mm -hmm. or put on a front. Mm -hmm. Right. And it may not be a big front, but maybe I was dealing with something and I didn't put it at the altar. That's still front. Yeah. So I think a lot of times, a, a lot of the reason why accountability is because, number one, we weren't taught it. Wasn't taught in a lot of homes, so I can't be what I don't have, what I didn't see. Yeah. And number two, too many young adults uh play church, mm -hmm. and they want 
this idea of looking cute. They want to they want to dance on Instagram and put a TikTok with them dancing, but nothing in the song that you're dancing to are you living. There's no evidence. So I think a lot of times it's I don't want to be truthful. And if I don't want to be truthful with me, I definitely ain't gonna be truthful with her. And then a lot of times, and I'm done. A lot of times, a lot of young adults like to find the people that like to do what they like to do and stay together. Mm-hmm. That's the one. If, if I know, and this is not true, this is an example. If I know Casey like to drink and I like to drink, and we go to this and we go, that, now that won't slide. Fifty one eighty, I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> um, uh, but if I know that I like to uh, drink and she like to drink, we gonna stick together and we ain't even gonna tell nobody. Because we like what we do, but we want to live this uh, fake profile of church and try to be a good human instead of a kingdom of sis. Mm. So I think a lot of times, um, no, I can't be accountable as young adults. And the reason why it's diminishing is because we ain't made our mind. Mm. What? <laughs> no, um, I, to piggyback off of that, I think there does need to be more accountability for the young adults. Um, because like you were saying, it's like church is tradition or it's even become a culture, yeah. right? So it's just what you do on Sunday, right? But it's not really showing me the cost of my decisions when I choose to live this worldly way. Mm-hmm. And I think we talked about this earlier. That's a lot of the problem. People ain't really getting the truth or not even that they're not getting it. But once you become a certain age, and you know some things aren't right, at some point you have to be like, okay, now this don't make sense. Are you going to try to find it for yourself to make it make sense? Because if this grandma did this, and then great grandma did this, and I see what it got them, okay, how do I stop this? Or why were they like this? Or was this, is this right? You know what I mean? So just trying to find, um, be in a place where you're getting the truth, I think for us, we all can attest to, we get the truth. So that makes us look at a lot of things differently, right? Um, and for me, when I came to 51, well, to Friendly Hill, um, shout out my pastor, uh, Apostle Duran K. Johnson. Um, when I came there, and you're so used to doing things wrong, and you have to unlearn you know, that tradition or those generational curses that you were just, you go to church on Sunday or you do this because this is what you do. You wear white on the first Sunday. Sunday, you know, stupid, just stupid not stuff, biblical not all. biblical at all. But I wouldn't really know that until I came here and really he breaks it down word for in the Bible, scripture, but it's not in the Bible where if you got on flip-flops, <laughs> you're not going to heaven. It, that's nowhere in the Bible. So um, I definitely think we do need more accountability as young adults, but we were talking about this, to be able to draw more young adults is if they understand, okay, they look. everybody looks at it like, okay, you can't have sex, you can't drink, you can't smoke, you can't do this. But they're not telling you, okay, well, I mean, you can be saved and have fun. How many times, how much do we do when we have so much fun, but we ain't drunk, we We ain't sleeping with nobody's husband, but we understand why we can't do these things because we are, we follow us of Christ. So this is what he expects of us. And because we appreciate and we know who he is, it makes us understand why we can't do this. And if I do want to show him gratitude, then, okay, no, I can't do that. I got to hold myself accountable. Wait a minute. Oh, man, he looked, ooh, but I know I can't. Yeah. Mm, I'm going home. You know, I can't even listen to this song today because I'm really fighting right now. And so yeah. we understand because we get the truth. And because I know who Jesus is, I appreciate the sacrifices that he made. Brandon, now I just understood all this four years ago, right? I'm 36. So, but now that I know these things, it makes me cherish and appreciate what he did. And you know what? I can never repay him, but at least let me try to live, right? At least let me tell myself to shut up when I really want to cuss somebody, you know? So, you know, so I, yeah, we need more accountability. Well, based off what y'all said, y'all definitely hit on it. 
Um, I will say based off all the other churches that I have went to and visited and played for, based off just knowing from going to different gospel programs and this program and they say, he say, do this. A lot of people is just taught like, okay, yeah, do this, say that, but you can't walk what you talking about or you can't teach the young, the young dude that's looking up to you like, hey, yeah, I might be doing this, but I ain't doing this right. I might be, I might be playing the drums, but I don't, I don't do right all the time. I mess up sometimes. So now we acting like we doing it right. So now he look up us. He trying to do what we doing. He doing the same thing we doing. So it's starting generational curses. So I feel like based off the church that Friendly Hill that I'm at now, of course, I'm getting taught to do it the right way. So I'm gonna be the person to set example. But it's definitely need to be taught more. Uh, everybody said pretty much everything. What I'll say is, uh, our apostle teach us all the time, you know, everybody loves to quote John 3.16. Uh, we don't quote First John 3.16, that God laid his life down, so we should lay our life down for the brethren. Uh, again, <laughs> just a little bit about me. I've, I've, I've been in church my whole life. Uh, grew up in the church, song, choirs, hold around, this in the third. And it's all because of what we're seeing. You come, you come to church, again, as uh, Mr. Destiny said, we, we know the catechisms of church. Everybody going to be laid out. We know how to get in the prayer line. We know how to fall out. I mean, it's, it's all these things. But, uh, again, there's no relationship. You have no relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And, and what I can truly say is by coming to Friendly Hill, I just thank God he didn't kill me in my mess. Cause that's that that that's exactly what it was. I mean, I was in the adjutancy corps, uh, traveled all over the world with bishops and stuff like that, and we were some of the worst people you could ever be around. We carrying Bibles and taking mints out of people's mouths, and and we we try to find the next woman to sleep with. We we trying to go to the next uh strip club, and we had conventions. This ain't like this happened like on the local level. This and third, this is the national level when we're traveling. And doing all these things, we have literally, again, some people have literally damaged the body of Christ to where, <laughs> and people really knew our story, that it, it would be no coming back from. But because God is so merciful and He's so great, He gives us chance after chance after chance. And again, with being accountable to somebody, you have to know those people that you can be accountable with. You can't, again, these yes people and people want to stroke your egos. If you want friends to stroke your ego, young adults, where we come from, you you really don't even, you, you don't even want to nod because it, it's not all about that. God chastises those that he loves. You can't deal with correction and reproof and rebuke and this and the third, then this day and age, it's just not for you. Uh, again, I've seen some ministries where their young adults is they say they are part of and I'm watching Snapchat this and the third. I'm like, yeah, ain't no way. Ain't, ain't no way you you a part of this church and you still you traveling with bishops and stuff like this and you flat out just drinking it in club. But and then you got the nerve to post on faith on Snapchat 24 hours later. Now I'm in church serving God. There's no way. So it, it's it is again. I appreciate my brothers and sisters that's on this live that's holding up the standard because we are fighting for the young adults. We're fighting to save a generation that to let the world know that you can still be saved and have fun. Drinking, sexing, and all that, you better find your shepherd and you better find your husband or wife. That's the best, that's that's all you can, that's all you can say. There's nothing and to live for Jesus Christ. There's nothing else to to be done. That's it. You you said it. Yeah, you said a mouthful. You nah, but for real though, um, I truly do. There, I I believe that it is a lack of accountability for the young adults. Um, I've been in and out of church since I've been um, younger, and I honestly believe that it it starts or it started with the older generation. So we would see that they were in church, right? Things are being preached and they act in one way. 
in church. And then when we go home, there's hell at home. So there's no accountability for them. Therefore, we're going to mimic what we see. Therefore, we're going to, we're going to portray something in front of other people, but then we're going to be different behind closed doors because that's what we, that's what we know. And so at that point, of course, we're supposed to live for ourselves, but it's so hard when the mindset has never been switched and the mindset has never been taught by the right shepherd. And see, a lot of the a lack of kind of accountability comes from the fact that people don't want to leave their family. And so um, when they are stuck up under the same thing, they like, oh, no, nah, this is my mama church. No, nah, this is my grandma church. I can't go nowhere. But then you over here living like hell, you're going to go to hell because you won't go to where the Lord called you to be rather than where mama told you to be. And so uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's bad. It's terrible, man. We see stuff all the time. Um, I, I have different co-workers. Um, we talk about, now we ain't supposed to talk about church, right? But I don't care. I, I, I You bring the subject to me, we gonna talk about it. My Lord. Um, go ahead and tell HR, we cool, we good, we talk about it. Anyhow, <laughs> um, I don't mind talking about it. So I hear about my different co-workers talking about their church and about different things that they've done or different things they've seen. I'm like, man, when will we ever come together truly as a church to make sure that we don't continue, like Manny said, the general, the generational curses, when will we stop them? Um, but yeah, man, it, it's terrible, but I do see at Friendly Hill that we are fighting. Um, I can't say that for everybody. And I don't know, you know, where everybody is uh, personally with their relationship with Christ, because we can only see, right? We don't know behind closed doors, but I truly do believe that the people on this podcast here um, are fighting. Um, I believe that we are making sure that our babies are not confused. And that's another thing that our apostle talked about today is not uh, confusing our babies where we're doing one thing and then we're showing them something different. This because our babies are all of our responsibilities because we don't believe that your child is just your child. No. You, you know, you, you, you kind of belong to me too. You know, if you're part of Friendly Hill, you know what I'm saying? We going to take care of your child because it's our children. So, um, yeah, that, that's all I'm going to say on that one. Man, y'all, y'all with me. <laughs> all I'm going to say, okay, so to answer the question, yes. Okay. Yes, that, um, I do believe that there's definitely a lack of accountability, but y'all have said really a good portion of everything. But the biggest thing that like that stroke that hit my mind was about it. Ta- it's a village. Right. So Friendly Hill, personally, let's, let's talking about the hill at the hill. When it comes down to kids and stuff, like Kayla just said, it's not just your kid. It's everybody's kid. It's a village effort. So if one person isn't doing what they're supposed to do and that kid is seeing that, you never know when the child may press play on that particular action, right? But the thing about it is, and this is where the accountability portion amongst the young adults, and not just at the Hill, but across the, uh, across uh, on a national standpoint of the universal church, you have to be mindful of who's watching. When you least expect it, I'll put it to you like this. You could be just at the grocery store doing whatever, acting however you want to act and there's a child that may see it but then that child and their parent comes to the hill or comes to your church later and they seen you cutting up in the store because somebody wrong up something wrong whatever the case may be either way it goes no matter where it is no matter where you are you still have to hold yourself accountable especially as a young adult you don't think there are kids on tiktok watching you drink and smoke and stuff and then the other thing, Destiny said something a little bit earlier, and it reminded me of the Jonathan McReynolds challenge, where people are playing his song, talking about, Lord, I'm splitting two, part of me loves the world, and the other loves you. And they're showing where they're doing these things in the world, but then they're showing themselves in church. Like Najee just said, there are kids who are still on this platform. So we're even still affecting the next generation when we don't hold ourselves accountable, when, when we don't hold each other accountable. So there's definitely a lack of um, a- accountability there. Um, and I feel like we don't, well, so, no, don't get me wrong. There are some, right? And I definitely, like everybody has said, I believe that the ones that are on here tonight, we, we've definitely done our part in making sure that we're holding ourselves accountable and holding each other accountable. But I, I'm just, I'm excited and I would love to see that happen more. Um, and, I, and I believe that it will, especially as time goes on, because there are people who are being reached, whether you want to believe it or not, whether you want to see it or not. 
there are people who are being reached, especially if you're doing what you're supposed to do. And if you're a kingdom citizen and not just a good person, like Destiny said earlier, you're going to reach somebody. Your actions are going to reach somebody, not just your words, but your actions. So, but to answer the question, yeah, there's, there's definitely a lack. <laughs> Go ahead. Hold on, Destiny. Um, um, and also, I think a lot of the thing is the church has dismissed the young adult group. And instead of asking, I hear this from older people, you hear from older people all the time, well, the kids don't come to church no more. Has anybody ever stopped to ask why? Mm. Like, it's so much of when young people, da, 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 da. because when we wear jeans, you act like we didn't slip somebody cousin them. Mm -hmm. What be wearing a skirt don't signify the Holy Ghost gonna be more on me yeah. than wearing, than wearing yeah. pants. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I think there's so many things that why the young adults, why we need more accountability. Well, we're not even preached to yeah. we're preached at yes that's not true. that's there's a difference yeah. right our apostle and i know y'all like they keep talking about our church i'm just come see i'm i can't speak for nobody else church because i don't go to church. Yeah. but man. our apostle we actually have something called true talk and it's for young adults <laughs> only where no subject is taboo right and we know the biggest topic is sex right we just go ahead and put that in. there's no topic and that's taboo no issue from lesbianism, homeless, there's drunkenness, there's no, and I think that's why there needs to be more accountability because nobody is preaching to us mm -hmm. to help us, to show us. Yeah. A lot of pastors, they, they preach, but let's be honest, you preach it to an older generation that's 60 and up. As our yeah, apostle yeah, teaches yeah, us, yeah. that's the Moses generation. And what happened? They had to die out in the oh. wilderness. So a lot of times I truly believe the reason why is because there's not enough pastors, excuse, there's not enough shepherds, number one. Yeah. And because our apostle will tell you, he was sent to Friendly Hill to save a generation. Yeah, not not that older people can't be saved, but you got to be a Joshua and a Caleb. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for a lot of our seasoned saints to even take anything yeah. that we're saying because they think that you ain't been through nothing. We get exposed to more than y'all ever was at our ages. Mm -hmm. Y'all didn't have social media. Yeah. And not only that, but because of the truth that we're under a friendly hill, we don't mind telling the truth. Yeah. So you talk about us wearing ripped jeans, but you wore a skirt and got five kids by four different men. Mm. Well. But but you concerned about us and what we doing. So why do we need more accountability? Well, we need it, number one, more. But number two, in order to get young people back, let us wear jeans. Like, well, you gotta let us go bowling let us yeah. go skating <laughs> let us go to the movie like, to the radio. listen to the radio listen to songs like let, give us parameters and once we mature we gonna know no nah, i can't listen to that yeah. song no more. Boundaries. we yeah. got it but some of us some of y'all are just some of us are just so church we're mm. we're no we're so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good mm -hmm. and you want to roll up shay yeah bye bye but that don't change me. Mm. You can be as anointed as you want to, but show me your stars as a pastor. Yeah. Our apostle will talk about if you women, we eat and drink. What's his yeah. name? He talks about that junk to us. Mm -hmm. So for suicidal person like me mm -hmm. that went through that mindset, I can register because he's real. Mm -hmm. There's not enough people in faith that'll take their collar off mm -hmm. and exchange your collar for your call. Mm -hmm. And not your calling to preach, but your calling to salvation. Mm -hmm. If you want young people back in the church, stop judging us and help us. Right. Well, there's not enough shepherds, exactly. right? Well, apostle can impart that to us right. because he's gotten through it. Right. He's real with himself. Yeah. So, in other for other pastors or whoever to do it, they got to be real with themselves. Right. And his well, wife. they can't be real with himself because they still sexy. Yeah. They still messing around, doing stuff they're not supposed to be doing. So we're it's just we're grateful we're and i don't know many other church i can just speak for where we are we get the truth so that's how we roll like it, the truth hurt that's but true. it'll set you free that's if true. you want to be made free so yeah sorry uh now i just wanted to piggyback off of what was that what that's you saying i just want to say that the dressing and all this all this protocol and orders quote unquote <laughs> It's all tradition. These robes, these collars, these crosses, these cuff links, all of this stuff is tradition. As Minister said, you're not, you ain't going to hell for no ripped up jeans. You ain't going to, you ain't going to hell for ripped up jeans, 
You ain't going to hell for some flip flops, jogging pants. We were out at the hill. When I tell you this was the best thing that has ever happened to me, we went to church Friday night. Yeah. To hear one of her co or her colleagues speak. This is a whole this is a Pentecostal church. So I get off work. I think I'm about to put on some jogging pants, some tennis shoes, and a shirt. We going. And this woman stops me and says, I said, let's, this is let's a formal church. I said, I, was, well, I don't I care what it is. Attire was, babe. Because I don't been delivered. When well, you know who you are, I can walk in there with, with, with some jogging pants on a t-shirt. And if the spirit hit me, I'm just going to let him have his way. It ain't got nothing to do with no clothes on. I but agree. I agree. I, just I am telling you, all those first Sunday white and covering these communion tables and the washing your hands before you take communion and all that, it's all tradition. You just got to be yourself, love the Lord Jesus Christ, confess that he died for you, ask for forgiveness to come in your heart, save you, and you save and get on the right track. That's all it is. And of course, you can't do everything that you want to do that goes against him, yeah. but a true relationship with Jesus Christ is the best thing that you can ever have. I want to piggyback off that too, because it was something that both of y'all said. There are going to be people that each of y'all may be able to reach that I won't be able to reach. So you got to be yourself. You can't be everybody else. And that's, that's the problem with tradition. Tradition try to make you be like everybody else. And you're not meant to be like everybody else. There are people that Akela can reach, that Naja can reach, that Josh can reach, that Destiny can reach, that Aunt can reach, that Manny can reach, that I can't. Why? Because that might not be my story. I could be relatable with anybody, but if it's not my story, the impartation not going to be the same. And that's the thing. When you look at pastors, or I'm going to say pastors, but preachers who are hirings, there's no impartation there because truly, one, it, again, going back to honesty, if there's no honesty there. Okay, and if you ain't overcame your situation, then you can't impart to me because all you imparting is your demonic spirit at that point. You're not imparting freedom. So yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all on it tonight. That's all I can say. <laughs> all right, Jake, can you uh go to question five instead of four? Yeah, yeah. Um, the next question is, uh, if each of y'all can, can each of y'all give three words that come to mind? when you think about the lack of honesty in church? Wait, five, five, question five. Oh, question five, we're gonna skip on head then. Yeah, okay, well, that so that being said, um, for each of y'all, what is your deepest desire concerning young adults? Um, you could say in both in the Hill and in the universal church, but not just what is your deepest desire, but how can you help in achieving, so. Y'all go ahead and hit it on. Uh, I guess just, I get for me, since, uh, well, my biggest desire is that we just, that we're able to just keep it a hundred with everybody. Keep it a hundred. Cause that just, in the, like growing up being church, it was like, yeah, we cool, but I ain't got nothing to, I ain't got nothing to tell you, but like it just like or um something I had to uh, get out of was putting on the fake smile and just acting like everything cool, but really on the inside I'm just I'm tripping, but I just try to play it off like everything cool. But my I can say my biggest desire is that the young adults are able just to keep it real with one another and a part, you know, of course, a part of holding each other accountable, but just keeping it real with one another. I 100% agree with Josh. Yes, yes, yes. The biggest reason why young adults don't do, because we lie to each other. Hmm. Um, we will literally create relationships with other people that we see doing good. And we want to be cool with them because we know if I'm cool with her, people are going to think because we're associated mm. that I'm good too. I don't want a relationship with her because I know her character mm. or him. But if I can just get close enough, ask Judas, if I can get close enough, then people may think that I'm something, right? Um, and I think for me, it's just having our own relationship with Jesus. Like, honestly and truly, like, I'm not getting saved because of my mama. I'm not getting saved because daddy. I'm not getting saved because yeah. of tradition. 
I'm getting saved because I messed up. Yes. I keep messing me up. I'm talking about me. I am my worst enemy. Yes. I, and yes. not because I need a house. Not because I want a husband. <laughs> not because I want to yes. get out of the situation I put myself in. Yes. No, because I took a look in the mirror and said, I am my own problem. Mm -hmm. And take that journey seriously. Yes. And stop, like Josh said, faking. Um, am I, and, and phony. And what can, I, what can I do to help is to be truthful with myself. Oh, and to continue to mature. Because there's nothing else. I can't change anybody else's actions but mine. What can I do? Look myself in the mirror. Point out what I need and say, hold, okay, hold. I know I'm having a good day. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, but help me to stop being selfish. Mr. Naji said it earlier. I call him Bishop Desmond. Um, said <laughs> earlier um, that, um, you know, first John 316, like, forget what I'm doing. With the, it's not okay. Boo hoo. Get over it. Somebody else needs not you. Um, so I think for me, it's getting rid of that carnal mind. If mm. anything, Josh, you got fake. But I'm going to say getting rid of the carnal mind. And the reprobate mind and the Lord continuing to have to turn young adults over to where he takes his hand off of us because I don't want to stay there. A lot of us like, God, God don't take his hands off. So how you get to a reprobate mind <laughs> to do what's not pleasing, right? Mm -hmm. He turned them over, right? And so I think for me, it's to get out of that reprobate mind. What can I do is keep living a life um, that's pleasing to him, not to man, right? not getting no pat on no back from you, but truly live a friend yeah. and not when I'm around church people. Yeah. Man. That was so nice. Oh, yeah. Repeat it. So, yeah, just basically like she said, um, being truthful. Being truthful, that's the that's the main thing because when you are truthful with yourself, you can recognize you're the issue. I'm a messed up mess that can't help myself. So, I can't do it. I need Jesus. You know what I mean? So when you understand that you can't make it without him, you understand that when you try, you mess up everything or make it worse, then you'll realize that without him, like he don't need me. Okay. Oh, he do not need me at all. He needs none of us. Um, but we definitely need him. But it's when you really get to when you start to want him. Yeah, you know it's a difference when you need somebody and when you want somebody. Yeah. It changes the whole dynamic. So when you realize, and it doesn't just become, uh, I need, but I, I want, I desire you because I understand I'm nothing without you. Um, and just continue to stay truthful with yourself. How can I help? Telling my truth. Yeah. You know, being a light, sharing my truth, being relatable. You know, opening the door, uh, waving to somebody because those things start a conversation. Um, you know, we talked about that today. The lady, uh, I go to this store and service them, and she just been frowning the last couple times I've been, and I was just like, I'm gonna say something to her. And she was going off about something. I said, Do you ever smile? I always see you frowning. Like, do you see you know how to smile? And she just, <laughs> she started to smile. And so I told her, you know what? I'm going to make, every time I come in here, I'm going to say something to make you smile. And that right there, just, okay, okay, I, I'm going to hold you to that. So now she oh, actually yeah. talking to me, holding a conversation, but I don't know what, Louis, will I get to see her Tuesday, what she may say or what conversation may strike up? Because what if nobody ever told her that, or if, what if nobody ever noticed that she never smiled? Like, you know, now, okay. Dang, she said something to me. She acknowledged me. So that I could that can be an opportunity to minister or to share um easily by being a light and being truthful. You know what I'm saying? So okay, so based off in my opinion, I think one of my desires, well, not one of my in my opinion, but my desire would be for us to become more comfortable with worshiping him because of the fact that it's so easy for our generation to go out here and worship a rapper, uh, worship an influencer, uh, worship a, somebody just that has an impact on our life. But with me doing what I want to do, I want to be one of the ones that, okay, yeah, I am an influencer, but I'm also influencing them to go worship him. Don't influence me. I'm influencing you. 
to be motivational, do the right thing when nobody looking, but at the same time, go worship him at the same time. So I want to make that a culture or make that the same way how you can go worship little baby. Come on, let's go to church. Or the same way how you can go worship a basketball player. Come on, let's go out bowling or something. So that's definitely one of my goals. And the only way I can do that is to lead by an example. Okay. Uh, I say the way we can help is to influence and change. While we were sitting there at tax go a few weeks ago, we were talking about the man at the pool of Bethesda, <laughs> and we were also talking about uh, the man that's going through the roof. And, I, and, and ever since we have talked about this, it's just like, it's just been bubbling in me. Like, there had to be some people there that seen this man in his condition that could have helped him get to the pool to get his deliverance. And, and as Mr. Desi said, when we were talking about it, there's two sets of friends. Because if you got friends that's in the same lame condition that you are, that really truly ain't even a friend. Because that goes back to being a yes man. If you know you got a friend that's in the world, that's drinking, smoking, this, that, and 30, you telling them stuff just to stroke their <coughs> ego and make them stay in your corner, that ain't a friend. The true friends come along when the man was lame and they broke the roof open to get him to Jesus. So in regards to that, we have to be young adults to operate and change. You can't be, and it, it also goes along with having people in your corner that, again, going to tell you the truth. And you not getting your feelings and not speak to me for two Sundays because I told you you was wrong. Or walk past me and you smile every week. You come get snacks, this, then the third. <laughs> this Sunday, you ain't got no snack. The Lord told you to go somewhere else, obviously. But again, that's a lie too. We have to, as a young group, we know for getting our feelings. We know for throwing shade on Snapchat, Facebook, social media, texting people in the church while you should be listening, this, that, third. You ain't fooling nobody. Everybody done peeped your game. So with that being said, you got to recognize who you're called to be. If you're called to be a game changer, be that game changer amongst the young adults. Don't be the person that's going to sit there and be the hypocrite amongst the young adults. We are all part, our positive taught on a series when I first came to the church, the ministry of help. We all there to help the ministry. And if that's not what we're called to do, it's not even in, even in the four walls. You call to help people on your job. You call to help people. If you see somebody in need, this and the third. I got a young man. I'm a, a, a manager of a kitchen. I got a young man that's working for me. He came and worked for me. It's most people out here that ain't even working. This, this dude didn't have no shoes, none of that. Well, I'm about to take the business account and get all that for you. You working every day? I'm about to help you. He was like, man, I ain't never had nobody do this for me. Well, you help me. You help me run this kitchen, this, that, there. It's not all about you. And that's another thing. It's, again, stop being selfish. It's not all about you. It's about the many of reconciliation and winning souls for Jesus Christ. That's how we can help. Yo, y'all, y'all blowing it out the park. All right. I feel good over here. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I gotta preach that thing. Don't, I gotta, don't, don't make me go get my app. Don't make me go get my app. I gotta see. I gotta huh? preach that thing. Huh? <laughs> 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 I gotta preach that thing. I'm like, what am I gonna say behind this? I don't even know. <laughs> I just, oh man, man! What I would say though, my deepest desire is really what CGSM was founded on, which is to ignite the fire within other young adults. That's the whole reason why this whole thing was created, um, and to take back the the ground or the the land that the enemy thought that he had, because you thought you had me, but bro, you don't have me. And matter of fact, let me go ahead and get my sister over here too, because you ain't about to get her either. Now it's a choice and if she want to come, but let me go ahead and still, like Casey said, be that light so that it's not, the blood ain't on my hands because I did what I was supposed to, you feel me? Um, so my deepest desire, man, is, is I, honestly what everybody said is truly to, to just for all of us to be honest, be truthful, for us to truly live the life so that other young adults can can know that it is okay to be a Christian. It's okay to 
um, want to do something different and also be successful because when it comes to Christianity, um, I think a lot of people think that Christians are supposed to be broke and broken. Um, so it's for us to show that there is that there can be a difference. Um, shout out to Manny. He's an uh, influencer. He, he got a business. Jay got a business. Casey got a business. Um, they got a business. I got a bit. You know, you feel what I'm saying? Like, so let's go ahead and get in these spaces to where we are able to influence everybody in these different areas and truly show them who we are in Christ so that they are, they can be drawn in. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got because everybody, y'all said everything for real. Man, I'm, I'm trying to keep myself composed here because y'all just, y'all done hit on a lot of great things. And I definitely agree with all of y'all. But there, there's another thing too, because I was like, Lord, what am I going to say? Because they pretty much just said everything. But what, what, the the thing that I, my deepest desire for true young adults is to stand just stand and what i what i mean by that y'all is that to not get weary in your well doing like dang like people don't see this like dang like how do you not get it but the right ones are seeing it who who are ready and who are ready for something new and who are, who are ready to truly say you know what man i'm tired of me like truly me ain't getting me nowhere, okay? I'm ready, Lord, if you, because here's the other thing, right? So like we, we Apostle has taught, again, from the hill, Apostle has taught to us about, you know, the great falling away. But in that happening, there's also, I, I believe that along with that, that now there's coming this generation, because we see it happening at the hill, that we see this young generation coming about who are unashamed, right? So if they are unashamed, why can't we continue to be unashamed? Why can't we continue to stand? Why can't we continue to keep going even when it doesn't look like anything is happening? Because just because you can't see the seed growing don't mean the seed ain't growing. Just because you don't see the you don't see the tree or you don't see the the stem of the the plant, it doesn't mean that it's not happening. You just may not see it right now. Even when it comes down to planting a seed, you might not be able to sit around and watch it grow. You might not be the one to get the harvest from it. But are you still willing to be okay with still watering, to still plant, to still do whatever it is that the Lord or the Holy Spirit will have you to do in that moment? And so one of the biggest desires for, like again, agreeing with all y'all, I agree with all y'all, but also another thing I just would want to add to that is just to stand and be okay with standing and being okay with standing alone. Because sometimes you're going to have to stand alone. Sometimes it's going to get real quiet to where ain't nobody calling your phone. Ain't nobody trying to hang out. Ain't nobody trying to do all of that, right? But can you still stand in the midst of that? Again, if you ain't got no young adults in your corner, again, come pull up 5184 Road because there are some real young adults there who will be willing to go hang out with you, who be willing to go bowl with you, who be willing to go watch a movie with you. Heck, we all getting ready to go to the beach, some of us, okay? We going to the beach in, at Criminal Town. So if you ain't got no family, come on and come hang out. You know what I'm saying? But uh, long story short, again, just being willing to stand. And the song that, that comes to mind is Stand by John P. Key and the choir. And so... um. Yeah, just being willing to stand, man. Um, even when it doesn't look good or feel good, still stand because there are people still watching. Again, Kayla mentioned how all of us being real, not just not just us at like as far as on here, but everyone has an influence. Everyone has a sphere of influence. What are you doing with the influence that you have? What are you doing with it? Are you pulling people down or are you uplifting others? Or are you bringing people along the journey with you or sharing what it is that you learned? Another thing that um, Aunt was talking about earlier um, and that even Najee mentioned, can you be willing to not be so hyper-focused in on yourself and being willing to observe, to see what it is that you need to do? Are you willing to be a vessel in that? Because sometimes you got to get out of yourself and what I need to do on a day-to-day to, to, e day -to, -day to even see what the Lord wants you to do. Again, like Aunt said, for her, it was talking to him, dang, you don't smile anytime I see you. Like, cause, but you don't sometimes when you're so hyper-focused in on your day, you miss the opportunity that the Lord gives you to do what it is that he wants you to do, right? But in standing and in listening, okay, Lord, well, what is it? Okay, daughter, I need you to go here. Well, why you need me to go? I didn't, just go, because that's what I need you to do, okay? But when you do that and you're being obedient in that and you're standing, you never know who might be watching you on the other side. I got neighbors all day long. I know they be watching, y'all. I'll be like, Hey, they be like, dang, you going to church all the time. And I'm like, how you watching me? Yeah. But anyway, the point is to stand, man, because you never know. 
you never know. So that would be the thing I would add. So. Uh, they wanted to follow up. So. I also want to say, Jay, what you were saying about standing in this and this. <laughs> also, I want people to realize too, when you get saved and you meet people like young adults and things like this, the devil's still gonna try you. Don't get it twisted by all, all of us on here. We 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 talking and we giving you revelation and stuff like this. The devil still try all of us. So don't 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 misinterpret that because you got to be strong enough too when you know that you're walking upright. When you get ready to make the mistakes like we talked about, pick up the phone and call somebody. Call that call that friend and be like, hey, you don't come get me. I'm about to go to this house. You don't come get me. I'm about to text him. Because I know all I got to do is text and it's over with. Before you get ready to make these mistakes, these people that you're accountable to and these people that's in your corner, you need to make sure they're going to hold you accountable even in your weaknesses. And when the devil designed to sift you as weak. Oh, that's good. Thanks, that's I'm good. sorry. Um, and another thing too, uh, two points, sorry, real quick, but another thing a lot of yoga adults, we don't want to suffer. <laughs> we don't want to suffer. My God. Because we've introduced ourselves to something that we weren't supposed yes. to. Yes. 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 And now when we get saved, I got to go without. Jesus, fix it. And the suffering and whatever your, again, we know sex is the biggest one, right? We just play a lot of people. So God be glory having me and my husband will experience that on our wedding night, praise God. But um, whatever your suffering is, we don't want to do that because yeah. it's more convenient to get whatever I want. Now, Apostle talked about it today. A lot of us, especially young people, we want microwave food. Yeah. We don't want grandma, grandma and them food. Yeah, slow cook. Right. Because yeah. the majority of us, if you're young, you know good well, you're gonna go get something that morning for Thanksgiving because grandma and them. <laughs> Ain't gonna be finished cooking. They say we're gonna eat at 12. I know good and well we're not gonna eat till 2 30. Okay, 2 33, because that cousin is supposed to bring the drinks for God. Right? <laughs> but even if, but grandmama don't start cooking two, three days before. Yes, she did. Clink some shit one. Right? Mm -hmm. And it's because it takes longer. And a lot of times we don't wanna suffer, we don't wanna wait. Yeah. Because suffering and waiting ain't cool. Because nah, I can't take not. a picture with my boo on Instagram nah, to make nah. you think that I'm something that I'm not. Like. Thank and it's, it's, it's this false narrative, especially in the church. We don't want to suffer. We want the best of both worlds, but it ain't how it happens. I have my flesh. If Jesus' flesh had to suffer for my sins, why can't mine suffer for his, oh, for his resurrection? That's good. For his grace. Yeah. And to think back over Mr. Najee, it's so funny because when we were talking that, um, what was it? The last couple of Sundays, he was talking about the conversation mm -hmm. that we had at the, at the table. And um, I was talking about this. And uh, we was all talking like, why is it we want the body of Christ to lift us up when we fail, but we don't want, we don't want to call on the body of Christ before we fail. Yeah, that's good. But I want you to let me know if I, if I fall and have a drink, oh, sis, it's okay, get up. Or when I go and I sleep around, oh, sis, it's okay. But well, why didn't I call you? you? Yeah, and I was in your area, mm. Mm. right? Like, why, why can't I do that? Or not only that, but why not surround myself with people I know ain't even gonna put me in that situation. Ain't even gonna yeah. put me. Like for it, one thing I can say, right? With me and Aunt, right? Or me and Casey, we different relationship or whatever, right? We'll just come together on a Saturday and just watch movies all day. We won't go nowhere. We won't say nothing. But just sit there and watch movies on a Saturday. I bet you'll keep you out of trouble. Huh? Mm. Okay. Oh yeah. Because I know I'm keen with somebody where she ain't gonna let me, I ain't gonna let her. Yeah. If I go over Jay's and we watch a top pair, yeah. She and the crazy part is. I can tell you, sis, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> and again, whatever I'm feeling, but I'm truthful. And so why am I gonna sneak around from you? But again, I should be able to call on you, mm. right? In that time of struggle. Or listen, I just need to go somewhere that's not here. Because mm. the way I'm feeling, if I'm by myself, I may do X, Y, Z, right? Mm. For me, my biggest doubt, my biggest thing that I always dealt with was uh, suicide and self-harm, right? Now, did I ever commit it? I did, I used to, I didn't cut or anything. But I used to like hurt myself. I would like hit myself and stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, whatever, if I feel like that, this is one person I'll be like, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, I was struggling the other day. Mm -hmm. But I should be able to say that. Mm -hmm. And if I do feel like that, no, I know I can come to you in confidence, mm -hmm. but I need to learn how to suffer by myself yes. to not keep bringing that to you. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, one thing I like about 
uh, some of our young adults. And I didn't understand it at first. Jay, it'd be like you, Imani, y'all would just be on the phone. And even now, not saying anything, like literally. And I'm like, are you on the phone? She's like, yeah. What are y'all talking about? Nothing. But it was an accountability piece, you know? So if I'm away at school, right, and I'm not around people who are like me, am I really putting forth the effort? You know what? Now nah, I got the call, sis. Because okay. I know that we on the phone, you know, and I, I mean, and that was a little in the beginning of the walk, but those are steps that you took when you were serious about, you know, changing, when you were serious about that relationship that you're building with Christ. So just you had people that you could count on. And even if we ain't saying nothing, I know you there. So I know in the back of my mind, I'm having it, I'm having these feelings. I'm a little hot down there, but, but Okay, I'm not going back. So let me let me call Gert, my my friend, and let okay, look, so it's one of them days. I just need you to just be there, and you understand that. But that relationship comes where that's part of holding yourself accountable too. It's like, yeah, I know you on the other end, but I need that right now right. to help me get to that place. You know, so I commend y'all for that. So God be the glory, um, child. I, I want to say this, if, if you don't mind, Caleb, it's okay. Okay. I do want to say this real quick. I remember, um, I don't know if I mentioned this on here before, but I remember one night, um, this was like after walking away from uh, the homosexuality lifestyle and I was, I was struggling bad or I was, I had came out of that relationship and the Lord was delivering me from that lifestyle. And I remember calling to Caleb one night and I was just boohoo crying. And I was like, Kayla, don't nobody talk about the struggles. Don't nobody, don't nobody be real about it. And I remember telling her that night, I said, I when when the Lord delivers me all the way from this, if anybody ever asks me how I'm gonna give them whatever I can to let them know, look, this is what I did. It might look different for you, but I'm gonna tell you what I did to help me to overcome this thing with the Lord. And I say that to say, why is it that we keep things so surface? when it comes to talking about our testimony and how we overcame stuff. Sometimes people need practical things like, hey, I went to the library or, hey, I talked to my sis or, hey, I went to so-and-so's house. Hey, I found somebody I could talk to or, hey, I found music. For some people, it's music. Some, for some people, it's an activity, whatever, a different activity that's going to keep them from going back to what they used to do. And I feel like not even I feel like, but I, I, cause I've seen it and, and I, I've seen it more so in the older generations. Cause now the younger generation, we getting better about it, but just be honest with what you did. Cause people need to know they trying to figure out how to get out of it. Yeah. I could tell you Jesus, but what did I do with Jesus? How, what were some of the conversations that I had so that I can maybe try it and see if it worked for me. You know what I'm saying? And again, it's tailor-made to each person, right? Your, your relationship not going to look like mine. There might be moments where he'd be like, nigga, get yourself together. Excuse my language, but that might be how he talked to me. Or it might be a situation of, hey, daughter, it's all right because it's a little bit more gentle. It's more passionate. But sometimes they got to be straight up. Nigga, get yourself together. You cutting up. You ain't flying right. Get it together. And so with that, I just feel like there that we have a responsibility too and I, I speaking for me because I know I took that personal charge when I was going through that and since then anytime anybody has asked me what I did I always make sure I talk about it but and, and when I say talk about it meaning the things practical things that I did again but I let them know hey yours might look different from mine and pray and see what the Lord ha would have you to do but this is what I personally did and so I, I feel like that's something else we should definitely make sure that we're doing Oh, that's dope, man. I think we we pretty much covered pretty pretty much all of the questions already, even though we had six in total, but we only went over four. Um, any, is there anything else that y'all would like to possibly, no, this is what I'll ask. Can y'all give us some things that y'all would like to say personally to the young adults? Like what, what, what encouragement, what word of encouragement would you give to, to the young adults? Starting with you, uh, Josh. Uh, I guess, of course, of course, get your relationship right with the Lord. That's a given. 
but uh, I guess from where I was, it, it starts, it starts seeing, it starts like, of course we hear it starts at home, it starts at home, but it starts at home. That's what I had to think, but it starts at home. And uh, it's going to get tough. It's going to get tough, but it's, it's your own race. Uh, and like what I've seen was, and I'm I'm so happy when I found out about what it was. Was I was I was hopeless. I didn't I didn't even give myself a fighting chance. I just was like, man, whatever. If whatever happens, happens. But to start getting right, and then you mess up, and then to get back right, it's like, man, how am I gonna keep going? I feel like I didn't, you know. I feel like I ain't even really worth it. I just, man, I. But it was. And uh, I talked to I talked to one of the deacons about it at the church, and it was like it's your own personal race. It's it's not it's not you running against everybody else. Everybody is running together, but you need to you know what your what your purpose is. You know what you got to do, and don't and if it feels like you're slowing down or you feel like you, as long as you just keep going. No matter how slow that it that it feels like you're going, if like first lady said, if you gotta crawl, if you gotta dig your fingernails into the ground, it just as long as you just keep going and know that you're going on the right path, you're gonna be good. And if you got the right crowd around you, it's just just keep going. Don't no matter how hard it gets. If you feel like you want to give up, don't. It ain't it ain't worth it. Cause I could just speak for me. I know if I would have gave up, it wouldn't it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been pretty. But I can say just for me, don't don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. The Lord never gave up on you because He gave you another day. So that that gives you another opportunity every. We hear it all the time. Every second is an opportunity to do something. If you miss it, oh Lord, okay, I'm I'm gonna get it right. I'm getting it right. Or, but don't just. But it's not always. I'm I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. It's I'm doing it. I'm doing it now. You see, well, I'm, and um, just just keep going. It's possible. It's possible. Anybody here to worship? Oh I just, God, I just right feel like, now. I just feel like, man, oh, that was so good, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus, Lord, you're good. Um, number one, I would say, don't let the church beat you up. Like, mm -hmm. like John said, bro. So, so many times the old church. Let's be honest. One thing I've heard the old older church used to make people do that got pregnant out of wedlock was bring them up to the church. Oh God. And make them again. talk about it or make them confess or whatever. And to me, that's the most humiliating thing you could do to somebody. Mm -hmm. Now, again, that's different when you know better and you choose. Like again, we all know sex is not an accident, just to let y'all know. Yeah. But when you humiliate people and you dog people and you're doing the same thing they're doing, <laughs> well, you're trying to hide what you did, but you're trying to dog me. Mm. No. So listen, sis. Brother, don't let them beat you up. Mm -hmm. Jesus loves everybody, but no, he don't like your sin. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. He didn't like mine. Yeah, he don't. But what he wants us to do is to accept him as our Lord and Savior. And listen, mm -hmm. when people tell you you gotta be perfect, mm -hmm. uh, what is that? First Corinthians mm -hmm. six and eleven. As such, were some mm -hmm. of you, yeah, right. And, mm -hmm. and 9 through 11, it talks about all these things you were, right? I thought liar, right? Mm -hmm. Dealt with thoughts of lesbianism and feels of lesbianism, right? No, I was never living. But uh, play basketball, so that spirit was going to try me mm -hmm. at any moment in time, right? Suicide, all that stuff. And um, the scripture is so familiar, but the church, we don't take it. When mm -hmm. I was a child, I thought as a child, yeah. I acted like a child, but when I became a man, I put with child's ways. And our apostle told us to look at it as when I was an immature Christian, yeah. I thought as an immature Christian. I acted as an immature Christian, but when I became mature, I put away child's things. He was like, that's changing the word. No, that's revelation. Yeah. Um, and all the Lord wants you to do is mature. 
he's not saying you, but you do, there's something that you just can't do. Yeah. And if you're not, this is what I would say. If you're not ready, don't play with God. Yeah. If you're not really ready to change, stop yeah. letting people fool you and tell you you can do both. Stop looking at these people that's like Jay said, doing a job in the rentals challenge, but they are going to be, unless they change, Matthew 7, 21 through 23 says, I prophesied in your name. Mm. I cast out demons in your name. Depart from me. Yeah. A lot of people are going to go to hell through the church because they did, they went to church, but they were never in the kingdom. Mm. Your name was written on the roll of a church, but it wasn't written in the Lamb's book of life. So listen, mm. go find a church that tells the truth. Do not go to a church that's preaching, preaching only prosperity in the flesh that has nothing for your spirit. Mm. If your spirit ain't get fed, stop going to that church. Yeah. No, seriously. Because it's only going to put you in more danger. Yeah. And when you're really ready to change, he will see your sincere heart. Yeah. Don't let your heart be hard. Don't let, like, really, when you're ready to give yourself away and be used, y'all, he'll take, he took me. Yeah. He'll take you and he'll mold you and he'll love you. But listen, you got to do something for him. And we don't talk about that enough in the church. Mm -hmm. He's done it. When he was on cross, he said it is finished. Yes, he has given us everything we need. So as your baby in Christ, you need milk. But as you mature, okay, Manny said it. How can I worship you? Casey said it. How can I put myself aside for you? Mm -hmm. Every day I wake up, how can I give you glory in how yeah. I walk, how I talk, how I open my car door, how mm -hmm. I go to bed at night, what I'm thinking about, what I'm listening to. How can I bring you glory because you've done enough for me? Yeah. And all folks say, if the Lord never do anything else, God, that's it. he's already done enough. But that's not cliche for me. That's yeah. real. And one day you will, you'll see, how did I make it? And I'll put myself through all this my, stuff. My, 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 my. Because he covered you. And he let you get to the day where you got saved. So mm -hmm. I would just say, get a real relationship with Jesus. Don't let the church beat you up. Mm -hmm. Repent. Don't ask for forgiveness. Repent. Do a 180, not a 360. Find a Bible-based church that's true, not a Bible-based church that's there to fill the man of God's pocket. Yeah. Um, and find you some good people. Man. Yes. I agree with all of that. Um, definitely <coughs> uh, finding your pastor, finding a shepherd. Um, one, and your shepherd, your pastor, they know you. Um, it's a difference, somebody that's preaching um, and preaching at different places every Sunday that's not a preacher as we know that we know that's an evangelist who how you gonna preach or have a field that you tended to other places and you're not you, you can't do that so first of all you need to find your pastor find your shepherd because they are for you they you have likes like apostle I can relate to him right it's like I have those certain characteristics or certain things he's been through I can relate to um the chastisement like I need that like I know that's my shepherd you know what I mean so that's the for me that's very important um and also understand um that it's not easy yeah. it's not easy you know it it's a cost to living right just like it's a cost if you live wrong um so when I first really gave my life to Christ uh four and a half years ago um I went through a lot after that like when you first get saved and you're serious about it be prepared to lose people even things you know be prepared to lose some things okay be prepared for that so don't expect when you do this everything gonna be all hunky dory because it's not okay and i just feel like that is part of the test how sincere are you? Mm. You know, what will separate you mm. if this person or this thing that you're putting before me leaves you or you lose it? Will you still be with me? If I don't give you what you prayed for, Ooh. will you still serve me? You know oh. what I mean? Um, so just be prepared for that. Really know the cost. Know what you're getting into. And if you have a shepherd that is giving you the truth and you're at a Bible-based church, then they will explain that this is what you are signing up for, okay? Mm -hmm. So you really need to know what you're signing up for. Um, and don't understand that you're gonna, you, you may fall, but it, that's, it's not over. Yeah. As long as you have breath in your body, as long as you can repent, not ask for forgiveness, not, you know, really be thinking, okay, I know I shouldn't do this, but I'm still gonna do it because after I do it, I can ask for forgiveness. No, once you, understand that you may fall but you can get back up 
you know, after you repent, do your best not to get yourself in that same situation. That does not mean those feelings aren't going to come back. That doesn't mean those urges are not going to come back. They are, but from being on the, you know, drinking the milk, you know, in the beginning, it may not come as often, but as you grow, are you growing? Like, how can you go to your word? Is he bringing things back to your remembrance? Have you separated? Have you changed your environment? Have you changed your people? Because if you are serious about changing, you're going to have to leave some things. And we are taught that. That was one thing that I had. You have to change your environment and you got to change your people. If you don't do those things, you're not going to change. So um, that's what I would say. Just stay encouraged. Make sure you have some people that you know for a fact are living the life that you can see where he brought them from like you can see okay i remember when they was like that but now yeah. man he done came a long way so this thing must be real let me taste and see you know what i'm saying so um that's that's what i would say and being truthful from me um i did give up right and i'm just so grateful um that he did not kill me in my sin you know what I'm saying like giving up hope is wrong you know you know what I'm saying like walking around negative um playing the victim um I'll be making excuses justifying your wrongdoing having these pity parties sin is bigger than just sleeping with somebody husband smoking drinking sexing it's bigger than that it's your mindset can be sin okay you know what I mean? If you're living in that constant negative mindset, that's not of God. The fruits of the spirit are love, joy, and peace. So if you're walking around hateful with bitterness, unforgiveness, that's not right. That's not right. So speaking for a person who did give up, but he still gave me another chance to get it right. But I needed that. I was just fortunate enough for him to bring me out. Right. So I needed to see you can't fix it on your own. <laughs> you ain't God. He don't need a mascot and he do not need you. So let him do what he's going to do. Trust him. And trusting is a very hard thing, but it's needed. So I'm just speaking my truth of a, coming from a place when I did give up. But thank God he didn't give up on me. He threw it right back. Now, the granted, I was trying to lead the path right there. But then he nudged me and I finally got my mind right. And he threw it back at me and I was able to get back up. And I'm so grateful for that. But again, I have a good church family. So no, you don't need people that's going to condone you and your wrongdoing because sometimes they have to love you from a distance. Okay. And that means, okay, I had to understand, well, no, they don't. It's not that they don't love you. They're not going to condone your pity party. They're not going to condone. Yo, they're not going to come down when I done told you what it is, when I done encouraged you as much oh. as I can and you ain't listening. What else can I do? So I got to let you go. And when you really understand it, that's love. Mm-hmm. So I got to love you. I love you so much. I got to let you go. I got to let you see for yourself. Um, and that comes with maturity. But again, I thank God that I had a, he gave me the opportunity to get it back right. So just stay encouraged. Like Josh said, don't give up. It's going to get hard. If the people telling you it ain't, the people lying. Why? It is not easy, but it's a choice. Just like you can choose to do right and right things can follow and you can choose to do wrong and wrong things will follow. So it's just a choice. So just stay encouraged. And if you really want to take that step um, and, and make, a, make that choice to live right, um, do it. You don't have to be at church. Thank you. you don't have to go to church. It can be in your car. It can be while you cleaning your bathroom. It can be wherever. It's just a conversation and it's a sincere heart. Confessing your sins, believing in your heart. Believe, believe those things. Okay, I believe I can't do it without you. You know, um, but you don't need an audience to do that because it's personal. The audience ain't going to be there, you know, when you're going through because you weren't there. No, but not in Oh my God. So. You didn't feel what I felt. <laughs> When he wrapped his loving arms, you don't know the talk. That's what that's what Miss Cece of the oil in my alabaster box. Oh my 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 God today.
Okay, so my encouragement will be to don't get discouraged, of course, and to take advantage of the opportunity that we have to worship him as young adults. And don't let someone tell you how to worship him because there's multiple ways that you can praise God. You shouldn't have to do it a certain type of way. So to encourage all the young people that look up to me and that definitely trying to do better for themselves and life in general, definitely don't get, get discouraged and to just worship God, make sure that that's something that you do more on a daily routine, the same way, how, as, I, as I said earlier, how we can praise all these rappers' influences. We can do it the same thing for God. Okay. <laughs> um, my words of encouragement is for you to embrace the fact that you have been wrong in life um, and to truly be okay with that. Because for me, um, it took me a little, it took me a little bit uh, to actually recognize that I was a terrible sister. Like I did, I, I showed my siblings some things they should have never seen. I treated them some, I talked to them like trash in the past. And I had to embrace the fact that, you know what, I've been wrong. So now it's up to me to go ahead and change that, repent, ask for forgiveness, repent, and do something different. Now you can't even tell me, my brother, and my sister, we ain't even deal with each other. You can't tell because I made it my business to make sure that I not only showed the Lord that I was changed, but I showed them that I was changed. And so, um, yeah embrace the wrongs and the quicker you do so the easier your journey will be because to drag out all this stuff all your issues you want to you want to drag it out no go ahead and attack it uh, if anybody know me I'm, I'm a person I just like to go ahead and confront stuff not just um with other people but with myself um but like I said in the beginning it was a little tough but then when I learned that I need to just go ahead and just attack it like I do everything else in the world Use that same energy and use it for yourself, for the word, okay? Um, so, yeah, just encourage y'all. Like everybody said, it's not going to be easy. Um, definitely, you're going to lose some people along the way. Um, and you want to find that you may you, you may lose yourself in, in the midst because you're going you're gonna to shed the old self, your old self, and you're going to then begin to live in the new you. And that's going to be totally different. And you have to embrace that new you. You have to be okay with the new you, which in, which encompasses you embracing um, the love of Christ, uh, showing uh, what that what that is, what that looks like, um, embracing kindness and embracing uh, forbearance and 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 all of these the fruit of the spirit. Right? We we embrace those things so that we can live a different life. Um, but it's going to be okay because there are people that are going to be in your corner that are rooting for you that, that don't think you're alone. That's the biggest thing. When you think you're alone, then you start doing crazy stuff because you think you're the only one that's going through stuff. You not, you, it's okay. But yeah, that's, that's all I'm going to say on that one. Oh, sorry. Uh, words of encouragement. All I'll <laughs> say is, is, um, Worship, sacrifice, stand, and make a commitment. That's that's basically what we are. Um, this road is definitely not an easy. It's not an easy journey. There's days to where you you want to quit. Days that you say, you know what, God, I've had enough. Um, you're gonna be persecuted for righteousness. People gonna hate you just because of just who you are. People and it's not really that they they don't like you. It's just the anointing that's on your life. When people see that you are, you are really striving and changing and wanting the best for your life, some people can't understand it. And it's it's okay to lose people. What I what I will tell you it is okay to lose people. It's okay to you know not know the plans of of, of God because you you don't know His thoughts because our thoughts are not His thoughts. And our ways are not his ways. Um, I just say, you know, strive to be the best, you know, Christian you can be. 
And again, it comes with rebuke. It comes with correction. It comes with reproof. Because if you're not willing to go through those things, you're considered to be a bastard child. And, and most of us Black people, we wasn't raised in a family where we had mom and dad in the same house. So we are already warring against the flesh. I also state that your flesh will never be saved. Flesh don't get, it's not saved. You, it's a spiritual, this is a spiritual battle. This Christian walk is a spiritual battle. Um, I just say, keep your head up. You got people out here. If you need any of us, they'll tell us how, they'll tell you how to reach us. That's really trying to hold up the bloodstained banner for Jesus Christ. And just keep going, keep pushing. Okay, Jay, I'm so sorry. Before you go, I also want to say, Everybody in the church is not saved at all. And so yeah. don't go into this thing going to a church. Listen, yes. everybody that just like you know, people that go to work don't work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody yeah. That go to church ain't say. So I don't want you to go out here and be so bright out and bushy tailed and then you get hurt. Yeah. Ask me how I know. Yeah. And then you get hurt by church people. And then you like, well, church hurt. The physical church can't hurt you. Mm. The people, people came in the church. Yeah. But this whole time, church hurt us out. The church didn't hurt me. It's the building. It's the people, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. please use discernment, especially as a baby in Christ. A lot of people that aren't who they say they are like the new people because yeah. the old people know who they are. Yeah. So let please use discernment, y'all. Like everybody in a church that says that they're Christian, watch their lives, yeah. watch their families. If they got children, watch their children, watch their husband, watch their wife. Watch how people interact with them. Watch how the people that's already there talk about them. Yeah. If you bring up their name and they say, mm, okay, mm -hmm. then you are, or mm -hmm. there's some of us, me, I'll be truthful. If you say a name, I'll be like, just be aware. Mm -hmm. Right? Because so many times with new people in Christ, we want that, I know Jay's talking about the Christian community so bad, but don't want it so bad that you get people in your corner that are detrimental. Yes. Yes, that's good. Wait, watch them. You go to a new church, watch them. You should be able to watch the man of God, watch the woman of God, watch their life and match it to the word. If that mm. man of God can't challenge you to watch him, you might want to watch him. Mm. So just good. be sure everybody that go to church not saved. Everybody that go to church don't love Jesus. They're just because they sing in the choir don't mean they got a relationship, okay? Mm. So please be advised. I, don't, I just don't want you to get hurt. Go for Jesus. Don't go for man. That's he will right. send you the right people, but be vigilant, especially go to a new church. Be vigilant. Listen watch and see if the people's actions match who they really are. Mm -hmm. I want to I say something real quick, but it just came to my mind, but understand that every old person you talk to in the church don't have wisdom. Um, there, are, there are a lot of, as you can see, a lot, all of us are under 40, under the age of 40 on here. And we have a lot more wisdom than some people over the age of 60, 70, or 80 will ever have. Um, and it's not even due to the fact that, you know, we've lived, um, you know, those 80 years or whatnot, but it's because that we are truly on this walk. And some people have not been on this walk um, for as long as we have, or they haven't allowed the Lord to truly reign in their life. And they started their journey really at 60 years old, like Apostle like to say, likes to say that sometimes people want to serve the Lord when they when they can't do anything else other than serve the Lord, they go, that's the only thing they can do is go to church. You can't party no more. You can't go to the club no more. You can't drink no more because now you got to, uh, now you got to go to dialysis. <laughs> so, I mean, ain't nothing else to, you know what I'm saying? But we are young in this thing. Um, we're truly trying to, yeah. So please just don't think that your grandma got the answers don't think even your mama got the answers make sure that you go ahead and you line up with what they're saying line it up to the word and then also if you got the cross reference go to you know might need to go to a couple of people if you got if you got some questions about the individual so yeah that's the last thing i say that that's casey casey yeah i think too just to piggyback off what akayla was saying about older people and not you know they're not what you know everybody's not wise because of age we were talking about this earlier well you may have 60 and 70 year olds in the church but they're really 11 year old little girls so they're 60 and 70 year old females 
but they still have that 11 year old mentality because they haven't dealt with that 11 year old rape or that molestation or that issue. So now they have, they're harboring all this bitterness, this unforgiveness, they're harboring all of this stuff. So they can't really help you. And you wondering why they so mean and nobody really talks to them. Well, that's why, because they may be 60 and 70 in age, but 11 year old mentally, because they're still dealing with those old issues. So yeah, just be mindful of, who you're sharing with or who you're going to, you know, for wisdom. That's definitely a word, man. Um, y'all, y'all hit on some great stuff. Um, so some advice I would definitely give to the young adults um, is don't be afraid of discipline. Discipline is, uh, y'all, like y'all have heard everybody say, this journey is not easy but man, is it worth it, okay? Um, but in this journey, one of the biggest things is one, being okay with discipline for the, from the father, aka chastisement, but also having that self-discipline within yourself, meaning, nah, self, we ain't finna go over here and bust, we ain't finna do all that. Or nah, self, we not finna get in this mood and this attitude. Nah, self, that ain't who we are anymore. We're somebody completely different. We're a new creature. So no, we ain't finna, nah, we ain't, we ain't doing that. But not even just that, but also discipline in the sense of, okay, no, I'm not gonna get on Netflix. I'm gonna get in my word. No, I'm not finna listen to this new rap album. No, nah, I'm finna go ahead and bump some Ty Tribbett or something. Like I'm gonna I'm do something different that's gonna feed my spirit versus feeding my flesh. Um, so a diff different discipline in that regard, um, to not be afraid of discipline in that regard. Another thing is apostle says that our apostle says it all the time, change your people and change your environment. Again, y'all have heard everybody kind of allude to this same thing in some, in some type of way, shape or form. And the reason that I say this is because sometimes it requires you leaving home. Okay. Sometimes it requires you cutting people off. Sometimes it requires you saying, okay, I see you calling, but I don't think I'm gonna pick up this phone because you be on some foolishness every time we talk. Sometimes it requires, you know what, hey, not coming over there today because y'all about to have a cookout. I know y'all gonna be smoking and drinking and I'm trying not to do that no more. Or y'all gonna be cussing and I'm not trying to hear that stuff if I know I'm trying to purify my mind right now and being renewed in my mind by the word. So, and you know what, no, nah, I don't think I'm gonna be around all that. Um, and being real with yourself in that. Again, you gotta be you gotta be honest with yourself to even say, nah, this is not what we're going to do anymore. Um, and also in changing your environment as, as well, it helps you to see a lot clearer. Or for me, I'll speak for me, in me changing my people and changing my environment, it helped me to see why certain things was happening in my life and the the different uh mindset that I had or the different habits that I took on or even for that matter where the generational curses came from because again when you're able to separate yourself you're able to see and really work on what it is that the Lord is trying to first of all get out of you number one because again you're having to pour out this vessel of what you have poured into from the world um, but also along with that when you're able to do that then you're able to be a true light. And then the people that you used to hang with, they're able to see and be like, dang, she different. Or dang, he different. Or dang, maybe I need to give Jesus a try for real. Or dang, maybe I need to do something different for real. Because if it worked for Jay, and I know what Jay was doing, maybe it'll work for me. And I'm here to tell you, we already know, all of us know. But when you truly try Jesus, you count up the cost and truly try him and truly give him a fair chance and give yourself a fair chance with him, it changes everything, man. Um, along with that, young people, get rid of the church hurt. Stop with this excuse of church hurt, bro. First of all, people are not God. Stop putting God's face on people because he is not them, okay? Now, that being said, that means you're gonna have to heal from your little girl hurt or your little boy hurt and stop blaming other people for what happened. Now, the, on the other side of it, if you put yourself in a situation, that's on you, okay? You got to take responsibility for what you did. Now, if it's something that you didn't do and somebody truly just did what they did, you can't blame God for that. If anything, that should make you want to hone in more with the Lord and be like, look, okay, maybe I'm not at the church I'm supposed to be at. But even then, one of the things our apostle tells us, if you ain't got no problem with apostle, what you leaving for? You, ain't, you, you can't go to church and go for people. 
you got to come ready to hear the word so that you can change so that you could be a light outside of the four walls and help bring others to Christ and bring us to the kingdom not necessarily to the church house yes absolutely we will tell y'all any that come to the hill but it's because we know what's at the hill it ain't about the church in itself but we know what's there we know that our apostle speaks the truth and we know that he's speaking the word of God and he's speaking the true word of God not whatever he wants but truly what the spirit wants so that being said man ultimately again don't be afraid of discipline go ahead and change your environment and change your people i'm gonna tell you this your bloodline is depending on you to change your your environment and your people your bloodline is depending on that y'all because if you don't your children are going to look just like you or the generations before and not just your children but your little cousins your niece your nephew all them if you even got brothers and sisters or whatever they're going to all look the same and the thing about it is again one of the things I think about considering like what Manny was talking about earlier about worship, right? We know that the father is looking for worship and spirit and the truth. How can that happen if all we're doing is dealing with a bunch of lies? If all you're believing is from the father of lies, because then if you're believing from the father of lies and if you're working for the father of lies, then who do you think you're tied to? Who you, whose team do you think you own for real? So in that, yo, you got Honesty, again, honesty, you got to have that honesty with yourself, but being willing to get away from those environments, because getting away from those environments and getting away from those people and changing your people and changing your environment, you're able to do something different. Ultimately, your family is dependent on it. Your family is dependent on it and not just your family, but other families are depending on it. But don't put it on yourself if they don't change. If they don't change and they don't get the message from you, that's on them. You did what you were supposed to do, baby. Dust, the, dust, the, dust off your feet and go ahead. Keep going. Because the Lord has something better for you to do. Point blank, period. So, uh, and then, yeah, get rid of that church hurt, man. Heal, let it go. Stop blaming God for what other people be doing. And you just, you deal with you and do what you need to do with the Lord. Point blank, period. That's all I got to say. Hey, y'all, y'all have been amazing this whole live it's, we've been chopping it up because we done we almost hit the two hour mark <laughs> so i ain't want to drag it out no more y'all um i just appreciate every single one of y'all um on here that decided to participate in the uh, podcast and y'all being open and honest about everything i also appreciate everybody who decided that they want to watch um i encourage that whoever's watching y'all go ahead and please share this because i don't think enough uh young adults see other young adults having conversations like this um they don't get to see the dialogue even between men and women because a lot of times we women we do talk a lot more and so we do have some awesome uh men on here who have been able to give their um uh, their thoughts and things like that we appreciate y'all josh and manny and bay over here um decided to be on here so uh please again um share it have the conversation with people what what are their thoughts about kind of accountability and honesty and what what are their thoughts on how can we make it better in the church um among us um so let's let's get the conversation started because that's the only way we're going to able to be able uh to to change things is through a conversation first um <clears throat> with that being said i don't want to hold y'all what's up oh no i just wanted to add um for those who may not be on facebook just to let your people know and everything, this will be on YouTube and on <laughs> podcasting platforms tomorrow. So if y'all want to go back and listen, if y'all want to get back on Facebook and listen, you'll be able to do so. Or you want to share it with your people who don't got Facebook, you'll be able to do so. Absolutely. So it will definitely be posted. Um, I encourage, uh, again, like everybody say, please, if you don't have a church home, or you don't have a pastor, you don't have a, a shepherd, please come on over to 5180 Fuel Road. You Fuel feel Road. Me? and fellowship with us. I promise if you come at least three times, you ain't going nowhere, all right? So <laughs> three times, you know, come on, come to us. Um, and we just, we encourage, uh, cause I, if, if you guys ever come, y'all would notice that we have a bunch of young people. It is not filled with older people. Y'all will enjoy it, I promise. Um, cause you're there to worship, you're there to get truth. What's up, Desmond? Go ahead. We have a fall festival next Saturday, between yes. us from 12 to 3 p.m. Going down. Yeah. Please, superintendent, please announce that. Please, Secretary of State White. 
yeah, so we do have a fall festival mm-hmm. next Saturday between uh, 12 and 3. Please come out. We have events for adults as well as the kids. Um, with the, the uh, young adults or the adults will also probably be in with the kids. I'm just saying, like, we have yeah, fun. A basketball tournament. We got a yeah. basketball tournament. Be a lot of uh, stuff. You want to play? Come on out. Come on out now. Nah. I'm gonna be the commentator. I can't do. It. I'll be the fail. <laughs> Can do that now. Uh, I will be out there <laughs> attempting to play. Um, I probably have a sub, but I'll be out there. All right. Oh yeah, Destiny will be out there. The baller. Hey, I don't know, Josh. From Lincoln. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Setting records, you know what I'm saying? So you know, that's the shit. All right. We need somebody to come on out there and you know do what they do. Did you Trying say to... I'm all right? Huh? You said I was all right. You you all right? Ah. <laughs> She already started. Already. She she child. Please. Don't play the game. Oh, and Isaiah's going to be messed up. This house. Isaiah don't don't play with a slide. What'd you say, Josh? I said, they going to be, I said, y'all going to be arguing like that too, but this is going to be in love. Absolutely. We just have nothing but fun. We cut up. We talk trash. We are petty sometimes or a lot. Um, but we it's true have family, a, man. It's true family. It is true. Family. All I know is I'm trying to win me a good cake on that cake wall. It took me a long time last year. I was I was down <laughs> in the ground because I'm trying to be number one this time. <laughs> we go see. But yeah, y'all please <laughs> come on out, fellowship with us on Saturday, and then come back on Sunday. I mean, I promise you, you, you will not be disappointed. Um, like I said, I didn't want to hold you guys too long. Is there anybody else on here that wants to say anything? If money no. says you're trying to race. Is money a race? <laughs> what? We're not doing no sack races now. Yeah, we is. Are we doing? Are we doing sack races? It's on there. That's me. Do uh, you know, referee in that one. Yeah, I just want to say just um, thank you guys for allowing us to even be a part of the podcast i think it's awesome what you guys are doing and just for us to be keep our heads up and stay encouraged because we did do this um this week so be aware of any distractions any extra distractions so we can stay focused because we did um do what the lord wanted us to do and the enemy is mad about that so for us to just stay awake you know watch as well as pray and stay focused so that we don't um, we can continue to be examples. We can continue, um, you know, to draw and reach people and live the life um, that makes them want to be like Christ. And the church saying, Amen. Amen. Appreciate it, man. Um, it's, it's been a joy for real because I think the last group session we did was maybe last year. So I think we, we I think Jay and I probably agree that we need to do more things like this. Um, maybe even do one in person. Uh, so be on the lookout. Y'all get another call. I'll let you know. And um, we're going to get it popping. Jay, any last words? Uh, yes. I do want everybody to plug themselves because Naj did mention if you do need any help, you need somebody to talk to, we was all going to be here. So I do want everybody to go around, plug they self real quick. When I say plug yourself, meaning yeah, if you want to give your Facebook name or whatever name you want to give so that people can be able to reach out to you. Oh, uh, if you want to give out give out your personal number, you can do that. But I don't advise that. All right. Yeah. Josh, you start off round table again. Oh, uh, I guess Instagram the still Fat Boy Friday, and Facebook is Josh Friday. Um, it's Destiny Johnson on Facebook. Um. And it's a picture of my parents. So you'll see my daddy and my mama. So you can hit me up on there. I, you can try on Snapchat, but don't do it. Just do Facebook. Bless the Lord. Yeah, Facebook as well. My name is Casey Camille. That's K A C E Y K A M I L L E. I thought you were going to say M I C K E Y. It's your boy Manny TV on YouTube, on Instagram. If you want to contact me. Uh, Kanaji Cohen Nesbitt on Facebook. I think Instagram, Twitter. 
You got the same name for everything? I think so. I try to keep everything the same. And uh, Anointed Q, LLC, if you want some barbecue, it's all about the wood, baby. <laughs> uh, for me, it uh, will be a Kayla Nesbitt on Facebook. Also, Coach A Helps on pretty much everything. We are that... married now. Yeah, we're married. But uh, <laughs> so I'm on uh, Facebook. Um, Coach A Helps on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So y'all reach out. And uh, yeah, we're here for you. Say word, say word. Hey, I'm I'm waiting on the place for Thanksgiving, sir. Hey, I'm waiting on that. I'm just letting you know, knowing the cue. <laughs> but um, oh, no place, just sauce. Ah oh, man, hey, but the sauce still hit though. So hey, hey, you know what I'm saying. But um, uh, for me, uh, my name is JJ Jones on Facebook. Two E's, J A E E J A E E Jones. Um, for Instagram, uh, it's J underscore T speaks. Uh, J A E E underscore T S P E E K Z Z. Kayla, don't do me like that. Anyway, um, same thing for <laughs> TikTok. Um, you need your locks done. Slay by J. Holla at me. Slay by J. MLS. Um, also got the oil oh, going to products going to you. know what I'm saying so. Uh, whatever they'll say the Lord, holla at me. And yeah, that'll be that. Oh, right, you want to plug I'll... cleaning? Oh yeah, your business. Come on. Oh yeah, True Vine Cleaning Solutions. So, if you need any cleaning services or any residential or commercial, um, that's the name of the business, True Vine Cleaning Solutions. And you can believe her because her house is really clean. So she's man, man you gotta take off your shoes. Okay, you bye. It's, it's over. Yeah, I'm about to say she God bless you. Don't have it smell real good up in there. Okay, God for the glory. Oh, you gonna have it smelling one for the also I want to say my sister's in this chat uh Crawford Cakes. I think I'm saying this right. E Money yes. Crawford. Yes, with, sir. With the, with the blessed cakes now. We're gonna have some uh we're gonna have that sauce and we're gonna have some cakes going for Thanksgiving and Christmas. I oh, think oh. more details will be coming out, but y'all, yeah, y'all support us and we need it. Support yes. these black businesses. Come y'all on. need it. Amen. Amen. Sure. All right. Uh, with that being said, y'all, that's pretty much it. We've enjoyed y'all. Uh, we appreciate y'all again. Uh, we will see y'all next week. With that being said, y'all just be blessed. Y'all be, huh? What you about to say? You you want me to do three piece Next month. Oh, next month. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're on this uh, unplug thing. I keep forgetting. Yeah, y'all see us next month. Um, <laughs> yeah, y'all ain't gonna see us like that. We don't be on here like that. We try to get some things up a little. Um, so y'all see us next month, and we have a good treat for y'all. I, I can't remember what exactly we do. <laughs> Talk about it. Um, y'all be good. If y'all do have, if anybody is watching, if y'all have any topics that y'all would like for us to cover, even yeah. when it comes to um doing more group conversations, please inbox us, text us if you have our number. Let yeah. us know. I would love for us to have relevant conversations, please. So, yeah. Oh, sorry. One last thing. And also, uh, for the ones that are looking to listen to this via <coughs> YouTube or via the podcast, uh, for the podcast is On The Game Podcast. Um, and for YouTube is Christian Gangsta Street Ministries, which is the title of or the name of the group, the page. So, yeah, y'all will be able to find it there. Yep. But that means, sir, y'all be easy. Y'all be good. Y'all be blessed. Y'all have time to eat. Yeah. Oh, time to go to work. Love y'all. Love y'all. <laughs> y'all be safe. Y'all. y'all be good. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>